I have, uh, I mean, make no mistake, I've, I've read multiple scripts in Hindi. I mean, many filmmakers have reached out to me. But I've not really read something that made me want to stop what I was doing in Malayalam and come and do a film here. Uh, one, because what I read was not that exciting. And two, what was happening back there was that exciting. You should not be going and telling an artist, you cannot do that or you cannot make this. I'm not a believer in that. Censorship should happen in the exhibition sector. Uh, you should stop, if, the, if a film is rated 18 plus, you should stop people above, uh, below 18 from entering the theatre. Box office numbers matter a lot to me. Because what do box office numbers mean? Uh, it means people have come to the theatres to watch it. And that is what you make films for. Uh, at least that's what I make films for. I make films hoping that lakhs and lakhs of people come to the theatres and see the film. And that is what translates to box office numbers. So, uh, everything else is secondary. Hello and welcome to OTT Play. This is Shubham Kulkarni. And today, I talk to a star who brings us a massive movie. Prithviraj, welcome to OTT Play. Thank you so much. First of all, how is it promoting a film here? I know these are like two different ecosystems, but how is it, how is it happening? For you? Actually, I, I beg to differ. I, I don't think it's, it no longer feels like a different ecosystem. Okay. Because uh, the more I, uh, over the last couple of years, I've realized that it's all becoming like, you know. The lines are blurring. Yeah, the lines are blurring. Now, after Bombay, I'm off to uh, Chennai and then Hyderabad and Bangalore and I've already done a press meet in Cochin. So, it just, I, it, it no longer feels like, okay, now it's, it's another city, another, I'm talking to um, media from another uh, industry it doesn't feel that way and it's great that it doesn't feel that way because I believe films like these that's what we are trying to do we are trying to uh, although it's a film fa made from Malayalam it's a story from Malayalam we are trying to make sure that this film comes across and gets across to people all over the country all over the world and uh, make it appealing to them make it something that they will feel interested to watch uh, because one one part of it is to make a great film it is. which we believe we have and the next part of it is to make it accessible for people, make people aware of such a film. So, it no longer feels like, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a different ball game everywhere. It's, uh, in, in another two weeks time, I'll be promoting Bade Mia Chote Mia. Yes. It's, a, it's a Hindi film, uh, you know, and a few months back, uh, not too long ago, I was here promoting Salah. Yes. So, it, it just doesn't feel like that anymore. Yeah. That's great. But then, we are talking about a film that is this massive. Yeah. You come with a resume that is long enough now. At this point, do you think it is still challenging to find that balance where you make a film that also caters your audience, yeah. but then it is also something fresh? Yeah. So, uh, see, I mean, whatever film you make, whatever genre of cinema you are trying to attempt, the endeavor is always the same. You make a good film. You yes. Know? You try and make a film that connects, engages with the audience. But once in a while, something as special as this, uh, you know, comes across, and and it's not every, uh, it's not very often that an actor or a director or a producer, for that matter, has the privilege of being involved with creating something like this. This is a 16-year-long journey. I said yes to the film in 2008, 2009, okay. and it took 10 years uh, for us to be finally able to start shoot in 2018 because that was how massive it was. Back in 2009, it was impossible to imagine something of this scale and size from Malayalam. Even 10 years later, when we started shooting in 2018, it was still a huge, huge risk. But thankfully, enough things had changed, evolved, progressed for us to then feel like, okay, this is possible now. And then there were a hundred other obstacles, like getting, having to suspend shoot for almost two years for the pandemic, then having to go back to Algeria, Jordan. But 16 years later, here we are, and I think there couldn't have been a better time for this film to release. Because as we speak today, uh, through the pandemic, how viewers uh, view content, how content is being accessed, it's all changed, right? There's been like a, like a revolution in terms of uh, people from different parts of the country now wanting to explore content being made in other parts of the country. That's true. So, I, I guess it's all meant to be that this film had to wait this long and finally, uh, you know, arrive in front of the world at a time and age where it's best suited for something like this. But then 16 years. Yeah. What does that wait to wait do to one person? Like you have to wait 16 years for a project after saying yes to it. Yeah. How do you, how do you not lose hope? Thanks largely to Blessy, the director and the producer. He, I mean, it's his production as well. That he had so much conviction in what he was making that 
when you see that man, you feel driven. You know, in these 16 years, I have done many, many other films. Yes. I've produced films. I've directed films. I've distributed films. And whenever in between, bless he's dropped into one of my sets or come home to meet me, he's still talking about this film, about what is, how it's progressing, what is happening, where are we at, you know. And when you see somebody as, uh, as talented as him, he's an iconic filmmaker in Malayalam, as big as him, yes. be so driven, so focused, I think that helps you, you know, that helps you to stay focused. And also the acute awareness that we are attempting something very, very special, you know. Uh, from the outset, from the get-go, I knew that this is uh, a film that will always sort of be there as a demarcated juncture of my career. So that awareness, I'm, I'm, I'm intelligent enough, I assume, to have that awareness. Yeah. That's so true. But before you became this phenomenon, the actor who everyone now knows, tell me, do you think the filmography, your filmography before that juncture is still underrated? There are many films that still uh, aren't discovered here. It's not. I mean, every actor will have, uh, every actor who's done as much work as I have, uh, will have those few films that when you think of it in retrospective, or you go back and revisit them, you would think, my God, I mean, this film didn't get the success it deserved, or this wasn't spoken about enough. But I, feel, but I truly believe that uh, even if they had not worked well in the box office, at some point, all those films do contribute towards making you who you are. So if people today speak of me in a fashion where they think, you know, they, they, they are invested in me, they're looking forward to my work, then all those films are responsible for it. So yeah, I mean, I can't be sitting here and complaining. If anything, I'm thankful for the opportunity that, I've, that I got to do all those films. Because regardless of those films working, not working, becoming blockbusters or becoming disasters, success, failure, all that together has made me the person and the actor I am today. So yeah, for that I'm thankful. That's great. But as a producer, what is your relationship with the box office in your mind? How do you look at it? Box office numbers matter a lot to me. Because what do box office numbers mean? Uh, it means people have come to the theatres to watch your film. And that is what you make films for, you know. Uh, at least that's what I make films for. I make films hoping that lakhs and lakhs of people come to the theatres and see the film. And that is what translates to box office numbers. So uh, everything else is secondary. The primary reason for you to be making a film is for people to see it, for people to watch it. So don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that money is what is most important. The fact that people come and see the film is definitely most important. And if they do, the film makes money. That's how it works. That's yeah. the direct connection at yeah. the end of the day. Yeah. It is. But then, this is a film that is set on a bigger scale. Mm. There is more money involved. There is a lot. Is there ever a pressure that would I be able to justify? There's always a pressure. There's always a pressure, especially when, you're, when you've imagined something at this scale and you've executed it the, in the way that you have with like a absolute zero compromise approach. This is way beyond your usual Malayalam film budgets or size or canvas. So there is pressure. Uh, there is pressure on the producer. There is pressure on the investors. Uh, but there is also conviction. There is also belief. And there is also the awareness that if at all a film ever deserved uh, so much of money, effort, time, it is this one. So yeah, we'll see what happens. We definitely will. Yeah. But then, you are one of the earliest current generation stars who kind of have penetrated in many industries. Uh, for Hindi per se, you here came and made a film. Tell me, why is the gap between these projects so longer? Is it because you are not getting the scripts that you want? Yes. Or is it a conscious decision? No, it's because I have not, well, at least till uh, Sarzameen and Bade Mia, Chote Mia, for the yes. longest time, in between I did a cameo for Neeraj uh, yes. called Naam, in a film called Naam Shabana. Naam Shabana. I have, uh, I mean, make no mistake, I've, I've read multiple scripts in Hindi. I mean, ma many filmmakers have reached out to me. But I've not really read something that made me want to stop what I was doing in Malayalam and come and do a film here. Uh, one, because what I read was not that exciting. And two, what was happening back there was that exciting. You know, because Malayalam cinema was, uh, is just going through the most wonderful of it faces. Is. And uh, we are in a time and age where it's not even that 
now you think okay maybe if i do hindi cinema i get a bigger stage more people will see my work no you can do a malayalam film today and if that film is great and if that film like let's say uh, a manumel boys the whole country is talking about the film today and it's a great film yeah it's a great film i, I haven't seen it yet but i'm sure it's a great film because or else it wouldn't do what it's doing uh, so we are in a time and age where there is nothing aspirational per se about doing a hindi film or a tamil film or a telugu film the aspiration is always to be able to do great cinema and wherever great cinema takes me next that's where i will go if the next great script comes to me from assamese cinema i would love to do it and you would love to see you there yeah <laughs> yeah i would love to do it <laughs> that's so great hmm. but since we are talking about films and the impact of it uh there is always this conversation that follows every movie now you cannot be someone who doesn't have an opinion in that if it's your film or if you are in the system mm -hmm. tell me how do you look at those debates for example like a film like animal creates two divides mm -hmm. tell me how do you then decide the side where you want to be so i am a firm believer that art should not be censored uh i am a firm believer that art should not be censored now uh, you can censor viewership and which yes. we are doing you know you can look at a film and decide and say that okay there is a regulatory body that has decided that your film can only be seen by people above this age group uh you want to bring in uh, a plus 21 rating please feel free bring in a plus 21 rating you want to bring in a plus 25 rating yeah no problem bring whatever but you should not be going and telling an artist you cannot do that or you cannot make this i am not a believer in that censorship should happen in the exhibition sector uh, you should stop if the if a film is rated 18 plus you should stop people above uh, below 18 from entering the theater other than that i am not a believer that art should be censored artists in general should be free to create and say what they feel like they want to but then do you have those knows that this is not something i'll ever do me yeah so yeah i mean of course each one of us will have our personal yes. values and you know what we feel is right and wrong but it largely depends on the character i am being offered will i play a bad 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 man yeah of course i'll play a bad which you are about to yeah will i play a man with absolutely no values and morals yeah i would play a man with absolutely no values and morals that is what art is about art is not just about the good art is about the good the bad and everything in between so do, do judgments hold you back do judgments what hold you back no they don't no that's so brilliant yeah. i want that clarity by the way yeah <laughs> but then i have heard you also doing a web show you are planning to direct a web show is something that i have read is oh yeah <laughs> yeah i mean uh, so the idea was pitched to me and an extremely interesting idea but uh, we have we have not progressed beyond the ideation stage uh, largely because of my lack of time because as we speak i'm directing a feature film i'm in the yes. process of making it so i don't know when i can get to that so let's see yeah so when do we see you on the director's chair again well like i am directing soon as right you are you are yeah. but when do we see that film coming oh that will be definitely sometime in 2025 okay yeah. that's soon yeah that's soon but now good life brings some of the best of the industry mm -hmm. best of the country there is when you work with so many people who have aced their talent mm -hmm. who have shown us the most amazing uh, stuff that there, there is tell me how do creative conflicts look like in that room when you are with arm answer there's resol there's you there's blessy sir how do you decide and say no this might not work yeah in a room like that so that is what is so joyous about making a yes. film that uh, cinema is always a team sport so when we go to world class talent and geniuses like rahman sir and rasul sir we expect them to bring in their perspective to the film right i mean uh, when when blessy uh, comes to me to play a character he is expecting me to bring in my interpretation of the character uh, so that is where the synergies meet and we have arguments we have discussions but finally we are all working towards the same thing to make the best version of what is written on paper that's true uh, so yeah i mean creative discussions conflicts arguments happen a lot if they do not you should be worried yeah that's so true yeah that's so true but what was the toughest day on this set like because it's a film that shot on a grand scale it's a film that shot in landscapes that are film, intense 
this is a film where I can't even demarcate between days. For me, Yours. Yeah, for me it's just one big experience starting from 2008-9 to right now. Uh, the toughest days would be the days when the shoot was stopped during the pandemic and we were waiting every morning for a call from the police department saying you can shoot today, you can shoot today and it never happened. Those must have been the toughest days. That's yeah. true. But before I let you go, tell me what do you want the audience to take away from the film? So the attempt behind this film is not to recreate Najib's life, uh, you know, incident by incident or not to recreate the book page by page. The attempt behind this film is to try and make you feel what Najib must have felt. Yes. Those three years he was in the desert. And I think Blessy has managed gloriously to do that. And as you watch the film, I would love for everyone to keep in their mind that whatever they are seeing is something that someone actually lived through and survived. That's so true. We are looking ahead. Thank and you. All the best for the film. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so yeah. much.